every time you tell me that you wish I'd die, it kills me. I'm trying to communicate with you, and you don't want to communicate so with me. So I, I, I have it myself from you. It, it's hard to be your mom. I don't me. I don't want to do this anymore. I thought to myself, it's over. I wanted no distractions. Where you see a black sheet, it means not touchable. OK, can't touch, can't use. It's no go. She went right to the television, and I was like, oh, no. That's your television. And then she went to the computer. Oh, my god. Oh, god, no. Oh, no. Oh, lordy. Finally, I had one last touch to add the icing on the cake. You've got three minutes to let people know that all cell phones will be oh taken God. away and they will be given back at 7.30 every evening. Why? Because I need all of your attention. My word, anybody would have thought that there was a hurricane coming. Like, they grabbed their phones and they all darted off in different directions until the several minutes were up and in the phones went to the pot. And it will be like that for the whole duration that I'm here. I was really surprised when she did that and kind of angry. Amanda was not happy with what I did. And if looks could kill, I don't think I'd be here. I thought it was ridiculous. I was so mad. I was infuriated. With the technology put to the side, it means we can really focus on what's important. They're a big blended family, and all these children need to feel that they're being treated equally and fairly. We have clearly established one set of rules for kids that come from previous and another set of rules. It's not working. What this is going to have on it are rules that apply for all of the kids. So let's knock that out. How about um, either like be kind with your words or use appropriate language? That's fine. Joe sat Jen and I down at the table and had us write out house rules. This is something that we've tried in the past. There are things that we knew we wanted to hit on right away. We did it fairly quickly. Be home on time. Yeah. After mom and dad had finished with the board, I had them explain it to the kids. So rule number one is the use of appropriate language in the house, OK? So that means uh, no swearing. That, yeah. That's not even just swearing. That's just talking, speaking kindly to each other. I thought the house rules were a joke. Wow, I'm not a baby. My mom has tried that a million times, and nothing ever pulls through. Uh, the next one is be home on time. So Abby, Amanda, when you guys have to be home at 10 o'clock, uh, it's 10 o'clock. It's not 10 30, 10 45. I think 10 is good. Well, I disagree. Well, what? Tell me. You talk to me about what time How you about think you is appropriate. You tell me why 10 o'clock is appropriate to you. Yeah, that's what I thought. In the summertime, it's gonna have to be later because 10 o'clock's like really early. Not for a 14-year-old. Like like yeah, 10 o'clocks for like seven-year-old. No, it's not. You're All right, really I'm gonna really compromise and I'm gonna say 10:30. It's freaking summer. These teens were out of control. They needed to be put in check. And I didn't see mum and dad doing a good job, so I told Julia to take the younger kids away so that I could have a good firm talking to them. There are people that are out there that do drugs, and they'd like you to do that with them. There are guys out there that, trust me, would like their way with you after a few cans of lager. There are guys out there that would like to put you in the back of their car and not bring you back home here. Here is safe. Out there's not. Nobody's ever been that brutally honest with me. I was like, OK, maybe I should understand why my mom's so scared. When you're ready, bring everybody back and let's carry on with the rest. When these rules are broken, your mom and I will talk about what the consequences are. But the consequences for any one of these being broken is going to be the same across all groups. I feel really good about the fact that I've got rules that I can fall back on. There's no gray issues in our house anymore. I like it. I like it. My next task for this family was to get them straight on separation anxiety because it's been wearing down the whole family. Don't hug her, pacify her, because you're giving her mixed messages. You're validating okay. that she has a reason and she feeds off that. We coddled Reese. We fed into the drama and felt sad for her and guilty. We were making it actually worse than it should have been. Then Jen, if she runs down the drive, you'll give her a warning about not going past there. And that if she then continues, she will go into timeout. 
Reese needs to realise that every time her dad steps outside the house, it's not an excuse to play up or be unsafe. I'm gonna go to the post office real quick. Daddy, I'll be right back. Okay, okay, okay. Daddy, I'll be right back. Everything will be okay. Mommy's in play with you. Okay, I'm gonna take the car. I'll be right back. Come on, Reese. We have lots of nice things to play with, Reese. Come on, Reese. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay? Don't need a hug. Not a big deal. gonna be right back. It's not a big deal. It's nothing to be crazy. Right, stop there. Just keep her out of arm's way. Bring her back over here. No, love, that's it. Off you go. Talk to you now. Okay. Do not cross this line. If you cross this line, you are going in timeout. Reese stood by the black line, crying. But then she looked over at Mum and she crossed over. Take her hand, put her straight into timeout. I told you not to cross that line. You are in timeout for four minutes. Set the timer. But Reese was not going into that timeout without a fight by any means. Come on, Mabel, let's play. Dry up. She's clinging to this chair with death grip. I mean, feet, hands. I put her right on that step. Just went on forever. She needs to realize that you're in charge. She has to do as she's told and do that time out. You do what you need to do, but let's keep going. Hi, Reese. And when John came back, as promised, Reese was still in time out. All right, Dad, did you place her in time out? I think Joe realized how exhausted I was getting, and she had John jump in and give me a hand. <laughs> Finally, we stayed put. <laughs> Mommy told you not to cross that line, and you crossed the line. Say sorry to Mommy for not listening. <laughs> No, you know, I was just so glad that it was over at that point. I'm so tired and hot and exhausted. What I'm hoping is that Reese understands that Dad does come back every time he leaves, and that when she decides to misbehave, oh yeah, there'll be a time out. So we start to see a different Reese. With Reese making progress and Julia now at her mum's house, it gave me a nice opportunity to work with mum and her teenage daughters. All right, Jen and Amanda, come with me, guys. Okay. There's an enormous amount of strain in the relationship between Jen and Amanda. A lot of stuff's not being said. A lot of stuff needs to be said because it's been sitting far too deep for far too long. So I decided to bring these girls to a park. I do know that a lot of the anger and frustration is coming from a place where you really feel that you've not been heard. And that's what we're going to work on today. Come either side of me. In between them both was a bag full of balloons, full of water. Get off your chest exactly what has been sitting here for years. You're going to pick what's out of this bag and you're going to throw it. Got it? Yep. All right, let's go. You're first, Amanda. I thought that throwing water balloons and talking to my mom wasn't going to get all my anger out that I had for my mom. You never really pay that much attention to me around the girls, and we never go anywhere that I want to go or do anything that I want to do because the girls have to be occupied, and it sucks. I'm really, really tired of you swearing at me. I feel like you never let me go places that I want to go because you're scared and you don't trust me. I don't trust you because there have been times that you have not told me the truth, and I can't trust you, and I don't have a relationship with you, and that is painful. And every time you tell me that you wish I'd die, it kills me. I'm trying to communicate with you, and you don't want to communicate so with I, me, I and I have it to hear. It, it's hard to be your mom, I don't me. I not do this anymore. I thought to myself, it's over. It's not going to work. And at that stage, I knew I had to talk her around to coming back to face what she needed to deal with. You go I don't want to do this anymore. No, you know why? Everything's always no. my fault. Come here. If you want to be treated like you're not a baby, then you can't do what babies do and walk. 
You've got to step up as a young woman and take the heat. If you quit, you quit on everything. You quit on yourself. You said to me, you want change, right? Do not quit on yourself. Do not quit on your family. Do the right thing. I stayed and I went back to my mom because I felt that it was important and Joe's words stick into your head. When Amanda came back over, that gave me a lot of hope that she's saying, you know, I'm willing to work through it with my mom. Like, I want the relationship. And that meant the world to me. I love you more than anything in the world. I want to get along. Please tell me where the anger's coming from. Where, what did I do? I don't know. I don't.